We'll look at uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James, a servant of God and the Lord and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. Now clearly this is written to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. So in other words, it's written to Jewish people. My brethren. So that indicates it's written to believers, Christians. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or different temptations knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And if you're a believer and you're going through trials, patience will be produced from those trials if you take those trials in the right way. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is ex exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is uh, no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So what it's saying is, happy is the man that endureth temptation, but when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You see, the temptation itself is not sin. It's sin when we react in the wrong way to the temptation. That causes us to sin. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's a strong desire. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own strong desire and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. You know, when someone uh, conceives, the, the child is not born straight away. You've got to wait nine months normally for the child to come, to be born. And so this is what happened. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Of course, this reminds us of another, another verse, uh, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. That is the outcome of our sin. Sin produces death. Now, if the verse stopped there, we'd be in a very dangerous, well, we are in a dangerous situation without Christ, but we'd be in a very helpless and hopeless situation. But the verse does not stop there. It goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we have wages on one hand and a gift on the other. Now, when we go to work, we work for wages. So we, we earn those wages. And that's exactly what we've done with sin. For the wages of sin is death. That's what brings physical death to us. But you see, there's something more than physical death, and that is spiritual death, eternal death. And you and I, when we're born in this world, because we're born as sinners, by default, that's our natural situation before the Lord, 
we are dead spiritually as far as God is concerned. He wants to make us alive in Christ. He wants to give us the new birth. We need to be born again to be in heaven. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So it's very important that we are born again, born from above, born into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So what you need to do is come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Yes, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. So in other words, we're born again by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit. When a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, they receive the Holy Spirit the moment they, re they receive salvation. The moment they receive the Lord Jesus Christ, they receive the Holy Spirit at that particular time. And that's a wonderful thing, you know, because God has enabled us as believers to live for him. He's given us the power to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. He'll give us different desires. You know, I've talked with people and they said, well, I could never give up this, this booze or whatever they're into. And yeah, they're right, they couldn't. But the power of the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit can. And so the moment those people I've been talking to are saved, God will give them different desires because they've been born again, because they've become a new creature in Christ or new creation in Christ Jesus. By putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will become a new person. We'll be changed. We will desire different things that we did, that we did desire before in our unsaved state. In other words, if you were into, you know, let's say alcohol or drugs or all the rest of the rubbish that goes with it, when you get saved, you will have a desire not to do those things. You'll realize that those things are sin in the sight of the Lord. And God will give you the power to overcome sin in your life as a child of God. Why? Because you're not the same as you used to be. You have received Christ as your saviour and therefore you desire different things. You'll begin to hate the things that you once loved and you'll begin to love the things that you once hated. So that's the way it works. Everyone who's born again is, has been changed. They've been given new life in Christ, a spiritual and eternal life that can never ever be lost and it cannot be taken away by even yourself. You see, our salvation does not depend on our behavior. It depends upon the finished work of Christ and our right response to that. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can never ever lose your salvation. Yes, you can fall out of fellowship with your heavenly Father, that is true. And to be restored to that fellowship, you need to confess and forsake that sin so that you can be brought back into that right relationship with your heavenly Father, if you're truly saved. Now this is a message so that you will be saved this is what we call preaching the gospel. And again, what is the gospel? 
It's how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Yes, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath for the wrath of god sorry for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of god wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Remember I said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's why we as gospel preachers come and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ unto you using the word of God, the Bible. You see, our words don't mean a lot. Our words might make you think about things, eternal things and that sort of thing, but really, the power is in the Word of God. The Word of God is quick or living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so the Lord wants to take that sword to you, that is the sword of his Word, and cut you bring conviction upon you so that you'll realize that you're a sinner. Because if you don't realize that you're a guilty, hell-deserving sinner, you'll never, ever be saved. What's the point? You know, if I'm not going down to hell, so what? It doesn't matter. I'll just die like a dog and be done, finished. But that's not the case. You and I have a spirit and soul inside of our body. And those things leave our body at the moment we die. Now, it's either going to be heaven if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, or it's going to be down in hell. What would you rather have? I mean, I've come across people and they say, oh, I'd rather go to hell. Well, they're obviously out of their mind. They're not thinking correctly. They're a bit hazy in their mind. Who in their right mind would want to go down to a place that is a place of torture? a place of burning. God does not want that for you, my friend. And if you think that you're going to have fun with your mates, you're terribly wrong. It'll be like when you're in hospital. You just feel so alone and lonely. And you just, you know, you centre your attention upon your pain after the operation or before the operation, whatever the case might be. I mean, once you have an operation, generally you're in pain after that anyway. So, you know, you become very self-conscious when you're in hospital. And that will be the case if you end up in hell. You'll be so alone. So alone. God does not want that for you. God wants you to be with himself. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. He sent him so that you could be saved. Now it says here, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Oh, I think I missed a bit here. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Remember how I said we're a new creation or new creature in Christ when we've been born again? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. As I said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, 
He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he um, beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being uh, not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You see, if you're a believer, the world will have a um, defiling effect upon you. This is why we need to keep company with other believers so that we won't go back to the same things we were into before we got saved. And you need to keep away from, you know, don't go anywhere near a pub if your problem was drinking, for instance. So stay away from the things that have captivated you in your unsaved state. I'm talking to you as a believer now. Because if you go near those places, you're gonna be tempted to go back in there and you know start drinking again and that that will end in disaster not that you can lose your salvation far be the thought you cannot lose your salvation if you could lose your salvation it wasn't everlasting life was it it wasn't eternal life at all so you know be real about these things and be honest and come to god in full assurance if you're a believer even if you've gone away from the Lord to a certain point, be assured there is time for restoration. I don't know about time, but there is ability to be restored back to God in the right relationship with him, to be on to talking terms again. Because if we um, backslide from the Lord, as I said, we're not going to lose our salvation but our fellowship will be broken. And you need to confess and forsake your sin if you're a believer and you've wandered a bit away from the Lord. So we're on to James chapter 2 now. James chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. No, it's got nothing to do with what you're thinking now. The gay clothing is the bright, vibrant clothing. You see, expensive stuff. That's what it means here. And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, and sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to, to persons, Ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors, or convicted by the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, 
said also do not kill, in other words, do not commit murder. And that includes euthanasia and abortion. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith. Uh, by my works thou believest that there is one God so we see that faith is displayed by the works that we do you know anyone can say I have faith but if they don't do things that are connected with that faith and do things to show that faith well what substance is there in their faith thou believest that there is one God thou doest well the demons also believe and tremble. So if you believe that there's one God, that's, that's great. But don't forget, the demons even do that. You need something more than that. You need the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. You need to put your faith alone in him, whom to know is life eternal. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See, he showed his faith by his works. He was willing to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, upon the altar unto God. I mean, it didn't take place, but he was willing to do that. And therefore, he showed his inward faith by his outward works, his outward actions. Seest thou uh, how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that work, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot, and she was a prostitute. Rahab the harlot was justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, this is God's definition of death. The spirit leaves the body at the moment of death. And that is true death as far as God is concerned. I'm not concerned about the medical profession when they say your heart stops beating and whatever the other things might have to happen. It's when the spirit leaves the body, that is what God calls death. So faith without works is dead also. If you've got faith, you will have works to go with that faith to prove that faith. I wonder, do you have faith? And I don't mean faith in just anything. You need to put your faith in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of of sins. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? Are you a child of God? Are you on your way to heaven? Remember, 
Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. What you need to do is come in repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. See the heaven or hell, depending on what we do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.